broad question, look at a broad picture, what is the mandate of the SADC observer mission in an election? Well, thank you so much, uh, Gravazio. I have, before I answer your question, let me make a few statements just to help us to create the framework of our discussion. First of all, um, we must understand that what I'm talking about today refers to the preliminary, pre preliminary uh, report that we released in Zimbabwe on the 25th of August. That's two days after the election took place. That report basically talks about our observation that we made prior to the election and during the election. And it's not the final report. I had the privilege yesterday with our team to present to the president the final report. We did that last night. And so now the president, who is the chair of the Troika, uh, organ of defense, uh, politics, and security uh, of SADC, has got the report now. But I am not dealing with the final report. I'm dealing with uh, the preliminary report, which is in public space now. And it's also important, before we talk about the mandate, to make it clear that Zambians must relax and feel proud that this job was executed in the manner that it was asked to be executed. There was not a moment that our team ever stepped out of the mandate because SADC is an old organization with established outline of how to operate. And you can't change it because you're Gravazio or you're Nevis Mumba. These are set in stone on how you observe an election. And the people that look after uh, the instruments that we use to observe these elections are people that have served in SADC for a long time. So I want the Zambian people to know that, yes, there's been a lot of politics, a lot of misinformation, and rightly so. Uh, politics in Zambia and in Africa as a whole is about weighing in on anything that is trending. And unfortunately, some of the colleagues would not even have the information. They lack information, but they want to comment on it. And in the process, they mislead both themselves and the people. And that is why we felt that we could accept your invitation. Uh, as you are aware, I have not been facing the media uh, since we delivered this message, uh, because we wanted the, 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 the statement to be read, to be, to be understood, to be understood, studied, to be studied, you know. And we are so happy that in the past three, uh, few days since we uh, released that statement, uh, it has come back to us to say that's been one of the most read documents, not only in Zimbabwe, not only in SADC, but globally. It has been studied over and over again. And we are very proud to have been part of that process of producing that. So to start from where it all began, when President Haka in the Hichilema asked me and asked us to represent not Zambia, alone, but to represent SADC. It was an honor for me, uh, for the president to repose so much trust uh, in myself and the team that uh, we eventually worked with to do this onerous job, uh, especially de dealing with this very pivotal election. Um, so he did not nominate me as president of the Republic of Zambia, but he nominated me as chairman of the Troika, on behalf of SADC. So I did not go to Zimbabwe as a representative of Zambia. Mm -hmm. That is why we are counseling our colleagues who are all hyped up that, you know, never, you know, was part of this project. And now there's a, there's a, you know, there's a conflict between Zambia and Zimbabwe in our, in our relationship. No, 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 it cannot be between Zambia and Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. I that was a SADC mission. That was a SADC uh, mission. Yeah. So I just wanted to make sure that the Zambians understand that the, the SADC has got its own rules in which Zimbabwe, if they are aggrieved about the report, they are... prospects that, I mean, there are channels that they could use to go to Gaberon and present their complaints about the report. I can no longer defend that report all, all the time because now it's, a, it's in the hands of SADC. It's Sadiq. a SADC report. It's a SADC report. It's not a Nevis Mumba report. And I just wanted people to understand that. So the relationship between Zambia and Zimbabwe, we are brothers and sisters who have always been, my faith and hope is that we we'll always continue to be brothers and sisters. This was a job given to us by SADC to which 
Zimbabwe is a member, and Zimbabwe is the vice chair of SADC. So they know how it rolls, and they know why and we And they understand there. the procedures very well. So what's the role of SADC in elections in, in, in member countries? That's the mandate maybe we should yes. delve in. First of all, I... Having worked with SADC over the past number of weeks, I've come to understand how well-meaning SADC has been in creating a community of nations that tries to harmonize the manner in which we run democratic elections. The reason is simple, that if we do not have proper elections in our region, what happens is that the problems in one country that is probably struggling, I mean, struggling the, uh, the, 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 the neck of democracy, the problems that begin in that country are going to flow out to the other countries in the region. And therefore, they have created for themselves a framework and a standard that, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, if we want to stay in peace, let us create an electoral system that allows our citizens in the community to feel that there is an avenue within through which they can express their feelings, they can make their choices of the leader they want, uh, they can express what they feel about things without being stifled, because the problem that the world is facing today, including West Africa, is finding a place where a electoral processes cannot function for the ordinary person, and therefore they become all uptight, and so Sadiq has created this opportunity and the framework, which means that when we go into a country like we did in Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. we do not observe based on what Nevis Mumba thinks or what Gravazio thinks. Uh, there's, there's what we call guidelines, uh, Sadiq principles and guidelines. Mm -hmm. It is this little book that was almost like our little Bible in the past three months. So there are three uh, pillars that we use to check whether the election is, is viable, is credible. We use the Constitution of the Republic of Zimbabwe. We use the Electoral Act of Zimbabwe. Then we use the SADC principles and guidelines for electoral, uh, for, uh, for, uh, for democratic elections. Mm -hmm. So we cannot go beyond those three. And it is important for us to note that somebody was saying, no, um, they have come to do a constitutional review. They are talking about the constitution of Zimbabwe. They didn't have the mandate to, to, to stray and talk about the constitution. We didn't stray. Because the people give themselves the constitution. Yes. That, but, that was one of the arguments. Yeah, yes. but, but this booklet gives the permission to Sadiq to interrogate any law that impedes a free and fair election. They don't say that, you know, you don't have this law. They point at it. They say this law is standing in the way of these guidelines. And since you are signatory to this protocol of SADC, you have to go back and look at your laws and make sure they line up with these democratic norms. So they can't say you can't talk about the law. We don't tell them to make laws. We don't tell them to change laws. But we, the, the, the observer mission points to those laws that are obstructive or you know, uh, retrogressive, those that hinder the free flow of a democratic process. So to that effect, yes, um, you, know, you can touch, uh, and it's here, it's all in this booklet. So as long as a country signs up to this, then they must be held accountable uh, to this. And so for us, we think that we are very, very proud of the report that has come out. And I think that well-meaning people, Zimbabweans, uh, SADC member states, the global community that understand what free and fair elections must look like, understand that our report was very uh, balanced. Uh, we talked about the calmness of the time of the election. We talked about the peace that prevailed during that election, and we gave it to Zimbabwe. And we applauded the people of Zimbabwe. We applauded um, the government of Zimbabwe for creating that conducive atmosphere for the election to take place. But our presence in Zimbabwe was not necessarily the outcome of the election. That has, that's none of our business. The observer mission's job is to watch the process. To, to audit the process. To audit so your preliminary statement on the Zimbabwe elections drew a sharp reaction, particularly from um, Zanu PF officials, some government officials maybe, uh, who, who, who thought you were not really fair. W what do you think caused the misunderstanding? I, I think that uh, they misguided themselves, whether it's deliberate or not. You must understand Zimbabwe is one of the oldest members of SADC. Zimbabwe knows the protocols of SADC. 
uh, Zimbabwean government knows um, that they are the vice chair of SADC. They know about this little booklet. Uh, and they, they mis whosoever started that story misguided himself to say that the head of mission, in this case myself, I wrote that report by Maybe myself. Maybe you need to explain. I was going to ask you, who prepared the report? Yeah. So I'm co coming to that. But I think that's their problem. Their problem, they thought that Nevis Mumba is the one who prepared the report. So they're shooting at a wrong animal in the, in, in the bush. You know, they're pursuing a totally d wrong animal. Even if they killed it, they wouldn't eat it because that's not, you know, the animal they're after. They, like I said in the beginning, SADC is a well-structured organization. I must add that SADC is one of the most respected regional groupings uh, on the continent of Africa, and it's, got, it's respected at AU, it is respected uh, at UN because of the manner in which they attempt uh, to represent their nations. So what happens is that from the day we arrived, the process began. I arrived to a whole list of meetings. Stakeholders come, to the hotel where we were hosting as the command center. And we met ambassadors, uh, SADC ambassadors. We met European ambassadors. We met political party leaders, both from the opposition and also from government. We met uh, government officials, attorney general, the inspector general of police. We met um, uh, civil society. We met the church. I mean, it was a long list close to 16 different organizations and individuals who gave us feedback on their perception of the election, of the difficulties they see, the hurdles and, and the unfair things that they saw, and they fed that to us. After that, we now had a very robust media team occupying a whole room where they were monitoring all media that was that is in Zimbabwe and coming from outside the country, and they'll feed me as head of state, and they'll feed the secretariat with that information. So that was also added to our, you know, to our uh, investigation of the election. Then beyond that, on the 18th of August, we flagged off and sent 50 of our observers in the 10 provinces of Zimbabwe. And then from the 24, from the uh, 18th, they began now to feed the headquarters with their observations prior to the election. And we're receiving these, you know, reports every night. We'd sit in front of a big screen using technology, getting reports from all the provinces and updating our data and information. On election day, they were busy feeding the center with all every little development that they saw, they reported to the headquarters. And after we get all that information, then we give it to the drafts team. The drafting team was composed of about 12 people from nine different SADC countries. We had South Africa, we had Botswana, we had Malawi, we had Tanzania, we had Eswatini, we had... Um, uh, uh, Namibia. Namibia. Then we had Zambia. And we had nine Sadiq countries. So this was not a Zambian mission. This was a Sadiq mission. And they sat around the table, got all this information together, and worked on a draft statement, which we call primary draft statement. And it was that statement that was now brought to the table where it was edited, uh, removing anything that we felt was not supported by other evidence and other facts, and I was not even there for that meeting. It was the Secretariat of SADC, it was the Troika, that is, Troika means that Zambia is the chair, President Hakainde Chilema is the chair, but his representative was Ambassador uh, Chibanda, and then Namibia had their representative as well, as the, um, the past, immediate past uh, president, uh, chair of the Troika, then we also had Tanzania which are the incoming after President Haga in the Chile, might be Tanzania. So those are called the Troika. So there's the Secretariat, there's the, the Troika, then there's a group called SIAC. And this is the advisory council uh, of SADC on matters of elections and everything. It's a group of lawyers, and we were honored to have a, a, a judge who is an active judge from Eswatini. These are the ones who go through every detail to make sure that we are legally sound in the statement. So these sit around the table and flash that thing on the screen and scrutinize it sentence by sentence by sentence and edit it. After they finish editing, then they call me 
I had an office there at the Sheraton. They would call me and say, Mr. Head of Mission, now we have finished our job. Can you come? Here's the report. Here's the report. So then I will sit with all of them. We were more than 25 of us in that room with the draft report. I looked at it, and I had to compare what they had written to the notes I was taking when we were interviewing the stakeholders. Uh, for them, they were privileged because I didn't find anything in the report that was not coming from the stakeholders who had talked to us. So I made no changes in the statement. So how much... Do you, just I adopted to, just, it. Just to ask you there, how much influence do you have as head of Observer Mission to alter and input, impute things into, into, into the report? I think... I could uh, suggest if I think that something is uh, not right uh, and it's not supported by fact. Um, I don't think you have that unilateral power to because change. these are these are professionals. This is what they do. So if you are going to challenge what they have written, you really have to have a good reason why you're challenging it. So I, I think that it is important to make this clear because I have heard people saying, that Nevers wrote this statement. Nevers didn't write the statement. Nevers read the statement. So when people rise up to come after Nevers, they are really totally misled. And then they're also saying it was President Hakainde Ichilema who took that report and changed things and gave it to his stooge Nevers so that he can, you know, create a, an embarrassment for, 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 Zimbabwe. For, for Zimbabwe. Far be from it. President Haka Indichlema looked at the report, and just like me, he never changed a word of what the technocrats did, of what the professionals did. Not a single word. I must remind you, when he sent us to Zimbabwe, I was waiting for him to give me a long list of what I must be doing there. He never did. He said to me, Mr. Vice President, go on behalf of SADC, and all I expect from you is to help to give the Zimbabweans uh, a free, fair, and credible election. Those are the only, he said it twice. I need nothing from you, Mr. Vice President, but free, fair, and credible election, you would have done your job. When I was in Zimbabwe, and we were on our way to go and see President Munagagwa to pay a courtesy call on him, I contacted the president here, President Haka in I said, Mr. President, I'm going to see, we are going to see your colleague. Do you have a word for him? Any greeting, whatever? He said, no. The only thing you tell my colleague is that let's go ahead and give the Zimbabweans a free, fair, and credible election. He repeated the same words. So there so was, it was one mandate. There and, was and, and, no and, instruction from President Haka Inde Chilema. He had no input in this speech, which is now being debated globally. The preliminary report. Yeah. What are the obligations of, the, of uh, observers and observer mission in line with the SADC uh, principles and guidelines governing democratic elections, which you've referred to, is for you to maintain strict impartiality in, the, in your conduct, not to show bias, not to, to express any bias or, or preference in relation to the candidates and whatever is happening in that, in that election. But your impartiality was called to question mm -hmm. that, you sided with Chamiso. <laughs> Just like I said on the issue of um, saying that Nevers wrote the statement, they were looking for anything because I think this report is not common um, in the Sadiq you know, uh, countries. Some of them, they don't expect Sadiq to challenge anything. Uh, they expect Sadiq to you know, just go with whatever is going on. And this is maybe the first time they experienced. So there was a reaction. Um, then they evolved, they created a story that the Sadiq uh, went to, went, accompanied Chamisa to the polling station to vote. A total fabrication. This was, this was supported by photos, uh, uh, not of course, no, not no, at no, the no. polling station, but of you sitting with Chamisa. And no, it no, showed that is like, the time well, when I sat with Chamisa, it was the time he came to meet Sadiq with his team. And we took pictures, just like we took pictures with President Monagagwa. And these are things that are really shocking me, that people think would go to observe an election and not talk to stakeholders. Who else did you meet? Maybe you need to explain. We, we, we met, uh, like I've gave... 11 video. contenders, did you meet all of them? Uh, we met about uh, four of them. The others were not coming forth. So we met um, President Chamisa and his team. We met President Munagango and, his, and, and, and also we met the Secretary General 
um, of, of ZANU PF at their headquarters with his entire team. So these are the, the interactions we had. But let me go back to your question. So they said that Nevers and the Sadiq team escorted Chamisa. They, I think they were now trying to create a story. We never uh, uh, escorted Chamisa. In any case, even if we had gone where he was going, it was still in order because anytime you, you as, a, as an observer, you find out two things. Where is the incumbent going to cast his vote? Where is the leading opposition going to cast their vote. Then you split yourselves as observers. Some go where the president is casting the vote, the others go where the opposition is casting the vote. In this case, President um, Munagagwa was casting his vote in Kwekwe, which was very far away from Harare. So our observers there went and took care of that. Those of us that were in Harare went where Chamisa was, but he found us there. We didn't go with him. I never made any contact with him. No eye contact, he didn't see me. We were observing. And the reason we do that is to make sure that when we write our report, it's legit. In, in any, he could come up and say, they did not allow me to vote, or they, they, they stoned me. And, uh, but if you are observing, you can say, no, 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 Mr. Chamisa, that's not what happened. We were there, we observed it. So I think that is cheap for people to say what they're saying. And uh, it, I know maybe the emotions that are, are you know, attached to an election. But we went to, to Zimbabwe in order to lift up the hands of the Zimbabwean people and work with them uh, to realize their dreams and ensure that we point out those things which in the next election they can work on. Look, Grevazio, here in Zambia, we have received some of the most damning electoral reports from different uh, uh, observer missions. And what we do is, well, we take those things, take what we think we can use to correct our ways, and those things we don't agree with, we diss them. Why is this so different? Because Zimbabwe knows that they are, they are supposed to appeal with the, against this through the channels that are created. You can't play this game on the streets. This is very high level stuff. You can't play with this on the street. And I think that I am confident myself that um, Zimbabwe is going to do the right thing. I believe that Zimbabwe is going to follow the procedures mm -hmm. and they are going to have their questions answered. One thing that is surprising is that with the people that are challenging our statement, there's no one who has come to say this issue that you have raised here is wrong. It, no That's one the issue come. of the constitution, which they say, this constitution we gave to ourselves yeah, and but you, as an observer, observation mission, you cannot turn yourself into a constitution review commission. No, we are and, not. And, and, and pass judgment on on. No, we on, never on pass any judgment. We that issue is in this little booklet. In other words, the Sadiq observer team has got the responsibility to come here to Zambia. And if you've made a law that says that you know you cannot campaign, only the ruling party can campaign, the Sadiq will take note of that law and put it in their report as a recommendation to the member state that that law stands in the way of free and fair elections. And your parliament must look into that law because we are a community. We have agreed on certain norms and those norms must reflect democratic norms. So I think that that question of saying that we are trying to interrogate their law, no, it's a law that impedes in the free and fair elections. And I think that we must continue to be strong to ourselves. You know, maybe it's the African thing. You know, Africa, we, we use euphemism to talk to each other. Instead of saying that, uh, you know, allow people to look at their, at the, for instance, the ballot papers, it's in our report. The stakeholders in Zimbabwe did not see the ballot paper until the day of voting. They don't know who, they, they only knew who printed it three days before the elections. They don't, they, they don't know how it moved to the police station. There's no one who goes with it. So these are issues that we feel like we must learn from each other, peer review mechanism. And see that's, how that's what you put in your report. See how other countries do it. Maybe we can get in a caller, uh, Mr. Mwewa from Lusaka. Um, Mr. Mwewa, welcome to the program. Go ahead and ask your question. Good evening, Gabriel. Uh, Good evening. Good well, evening. Good evening. Yeah. Good evening, uh, Dr. Bumba. Mm -hmm. Hello. Go ahead. We can hear you. Yes. Uh, I wanted to find out something. Uh, I've been listening to the Dr. Bumba. Uh, you know, writing a 
Writing a report is one thing. The format and the language of the report is another thing. Now, that report which he wrote, or they wrote, this is a collective uh, responsibility. Did it, was it in line with the guidelines, the static guidelines and the policies? In other words, is there a format in which the, the report must be presented and the language of the, in the report? Because what, what I'm sensing here is that probably the people of Zimbabwe are offended, one, by the language and probably the format of the report. It was not in line with the subject guidelines. So is there, are there guidelines? Does subject guidelines give the, the kind of language that you should use in the report and the format? Mr. Thank Mawa, you so thank much. you so much. We've got a, we've got a question. Yeah, let, let is me, there a format? Yeah, let, is there yeah. a language, let prescribed me, let, language? Yeah, let me help him also by telling him that um, when he says the people of Zimbabwe, are free, that's not true. I mean, go, just go to social media and find out what Zimbabweans are saying about this report. You'll be shocked on how they have embraced this report. So when it says Zimbabwean people, I do not think that's accurate. But let me come to, there's a template that is used all the time to report. So we did not create a new template. It's a template which you populate as they observe. And I must say that this is a highly scientific uh, process. It's a scientific process because it has a system to it, and it has headings already, and they populate each one of those headings. So to answer our colleague who asked the question, yes, there's a template that is used by SADIC, and it follows the guidelines of SADIC. One thing I want to assure the Zambians is that this report that was done, and I'm talking to Zambians now because some people try to mislead Zambians, but this report that was done was done in accordance with the guidelines and the principles of SADIC. We never went out. There could be a mistake, maybe in a comma, a full stop, or a word, which may mean two things, but because life is not perfect. But in terms of the foundations upon which we built this statement, it was built on the constitution of Zimbabwe. We had to always have the copy of the Constitution. And if there was a departure from their own laws, we pointed it out. Then the second thing we use, like I said, is the Electoral Act. Mm -hmm. And it guides the Zimbabweans how they are going to handle their elections. And if they depart from it, the observer says, but you departed from this. The third thing are the guidelines for SADIC. And these three guided us right away through until the statement was made. So. It can stand strong and tall in any courthouse, this statement. At any time. Let's look at the whole issue now is turned into Western imperialism versus communism and Marxism. Should this be the topic of debate? Maybe before you go there, uh, I didn't honor your question, which you asked before that. And I think it's fair that I talk about the impartiality issue that you talked about. I think it's unfair to say that never or, or Sadiq is impartial. Uh, some of the people decided that um, because Chamisa is a pastor, then I'm impartial. And I think it's an insult to my integrity and to my dignity that they think that I can compromise my sense of judgment because Gravazio had lunch with me yesterday, and if he's done a wrong thing, that I'll, I'll, I don't operate like that. I am addicted to justice. I am addicted to fairness. That's really what I am as a pastor or just as a political leader. Zambians know that if you want truth, talk to Nevers. I will not depart. It's painful, like I'm paying a high price now. There are people that are already in this country that have been sent to look for me. And they have been talking to my pastors with cameras, uh, trying to create stories about me. But that doesn't move me because truth shall set you free. It doesn't matter how long it takes. I was Yes, I, he's a pastor, but I don't even know uh, Mr. Chamisa's wife. I don't know his children. I know he's a pastor. I've never heard him preach. So I do know him as, as a man who has a passion for his country. But I also know President Munagagwa. And I was with him, and we had a lot of laughter to do. He has a strong Zambian background. He speaks most of our languages. And when I was at State House, we were using Zambian language to speak to each other. So I have that cordial relationship with him. It has nothing with both. to do. Let, let's, with, let's get in a caller yeah. before, before, before we lose her. We'll take up from Mumpika. Uh, You're you are through to the program. Please go ahead and ask your question. Uh, good evening, Mr. Grevazo. Good evening. Uh, good evening, Dr. Bomba. Good evening. Good evening. 
So I represent an organization called Community Action Against Political Violence. I'm the Secretary General for that organization. Mine is more of a comment than a, a, a question. I think uh, to begin with, it is important that we need to be a brother's keeper in as far as Sadiq uh, countries is concerned. One of the reasons that you realize that uh, there are unrest in the African countries is the issue to do with the governance, especially when the citizens feel that uh, the electoral processes and governance is not fair. So from our point of view, I think it is important to applaud, you know, Sadiq through, you know, the president, Mr. Hagai Dechemba, and the, also the, uh, the, the observer leader that he said, Dr. Nevas Mumba, because that report, like you have said, uh, Dr. Mumba, it is not your report. I think that's where we are missing it as citizens, and also especially we have seen some sentiments from other opposition political parties that are just alarming, uh, issuing alarming statements. That is like, he, you know, Dr. Mumba went to Zimbabwe and the, our current president want to change the governance of Zimbabwe. So I think as a brother's keeper, Sadiq member states should go into an honest conversation with the, the Zimbabwean leadership. In as far as Mr. the Mateka, we have to we have to allow you to go. Yeah. <laughs> we need to yeah, allow Dr. Mumbai. Thank you, much, thank you so Sadiq. much for calling in and for your contribution. Yeah. Um, thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, let me help here. I, I think that um, the narrative that is going on that uh, President Haka Inde Chilema and Nevers Mumba are being used by Western powers to uh, effect regime change in, um, in, Zimbabwe. in Zimbabwe, I think to me is one of the most unfortunate cheap statements that anybody can make. Um, first of all, President Haka Chilema didn't send me there as, as, his, as a Zambian president. He sent me there on behalf of Sadiq. And they must respect uh, the chairmanship that is being held by President Haka Chilema. He has been given that. He was elected to be that. And all Sadiq must respect that role that he's playing. And he chooses whom he believes will be able to deliver. And I believe that we did deliver on behalf of not just Zambia, but on behalf of Sadiq. And I think that... This usage, uh, Gravazio, of the word the Western and uh, propaganda, Western imperialism, and imperialism, and communism, puppet, puppet, Marxism, and uh, puppet. Pup if you give me puppet of the West, if you yes. give me four minutes, let me deal with this subject to my brothers and sisters in the political field of this country. Let's not cheapen ourselves to try to divide ourselves as a people between two powers that have nothing or very little to do with us. We are not Westerners. We are not communists. We are Africans. And if you start to divide the continent along those lines, you are cheapening who you are. We have our own interests as Africa. Yes, I think that for us as Zambia, our approach has been to work with any country who can help us to better the lives of the Zambian people. The West, for instance. There are things we like about the West and things we don't like about the West. And we call the Western thing the Western thought. It is a, a, a thought of freedom, a thought of democracy, a thought of regular elections. So every Zambian, every politician who goes to vote on a voting day, he's exercising a Western thought. So he's a Western puppet. Anybody who goes to vote, if you want to use that puppet issue, is a Western puppet because voting and regular elections are a Western, Western ideology. thought. It's ideology. It's, it's a freedom of, 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 of the freedom of expression, the freedom of, of association. That is why that is very close to the Bible, where God allows people to freely choose their own things that they want. And that's where that comes from. The Eastern Bloc, which my colleagues here in this country perpetuate and push, we have nothing against them. I like their infrastructure projects with us. Russia helped, uh, helped a lot of African countries to receive their independence. But there are things we don't celebrate about them. For instance, we, we, we think that Marxism, communism, socialism, these isms are the ones that control, they control the people. They want to think for people, and people's thinking is actually regulated by government, and they are not that churchy. They, that's where you found in China, in Russia, the persecution of Christians is high there. 
because, and then also the thing some of us don't like there, and I don't like things like homosexuality on the Western side. So we pick what we like and we leave what we don't like. On the Eastern side, we like their engagement with you know, structures and things, but you must understand China and Russia, they are the ones that really look down about, upon black people. If you look how they treat black people, you cannot say that they are our messiahs. No, we are our own messiahs. We have chosen God as a leader of our country, and we should make sure we do that. And my well, advice, well, let's get in a caller. We've got Ambassador George Zulu on the line. Uh, Ambassador, you're through to the program. Please go ahead and ask your question. Uh, good evening, Grivalio. Uh, good evening. Good evening, uh, Vice President Mumba. Good evening, sir. First of all, I uh, should uh, congratulate you for the first class work you did in Zimbabwe. Thank you. The Zimbabwe issue is historical. You did Zambia beauty. You remember that uh, even during the time of struggle, when we were fighting and going to Lancaster House, Kenneth Kaunda was accused of favoring Joshua Nkomo to Robert Mugabe. When President Robert, Robert Mugabe became president, President Mwanawasa was equally accused of having favored the opposition in that country. So that is not new. What, what we need is to follow what you have done. Done it very, very well for Zambia. We need to engage Zimbabwe without fear or shame so that we can find a common ground in terms of democracy. We as Zambians are not happy with that, what that country has gone through has gone through a traumatic period. But what you did, you did, Zambia, what your forefathers could have done. You could have not done anything better than what you did. We need Zambians to applaud your job in that country. I'm sure that ZANU-PF will begin to understand what you stand for and what Zambia stands for. We don't favor anybody. We favor proper democracy in our region. Ambassador, thank you so much for thank coming you. through. Yeah. Uh, thank you God for your contribution. Yeah. So God maybe, 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 Doctor, you, 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 you would pick this other question also, the importance of free and fair elections to SADC in Africa. I know, according to the guidelines, SADC operates with five key concepts, looking at uh, credible elections, transparent elections, peaceful elections, free elections, fair elections. You know why? If we don't work hard on ensuring that the elections in our region are free and fair, we'll create a problem for ourselves. People will start to find other ways to express themselves. This is why SADC insists on all member countries to comply with those that you have just read. Transparency, transparency is one of the biggest problems that we are facing right now. And if we don't do that, like I was saying when, when, when the call came in, there are a lot of us in the political world today, and I won't mention any names, that have become so reckless in trying to divide us between the West and the East. And someone saying that uh, uh, Harainde Chilema is a puppet of the West and puppet, puppet every day. They are also puppets of whosoever they dance their music to. So you you cannot call your friend a puppet just because he doesn't believe in what you believe. The reason they are doing that is to divide this country and, 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 and I have to warn the politicians, you know our friends, all of us in politics, Zambians, you know our friends, people we fraternize with. Look at the friends each one of us has. Look what they're doing in West Africa. They are trying to create the same situation here. They are trying to prepare an atmosphere for coups around Africa. And they have chosen certain political leaders to speak a certain language of bringing a division to say, this one is a Western puppet. This one is, uh, I don't know what they call themselves, like, you know, they belong to the East, they belong to Marxism, they belong to socialism, they belong to uh, communism. We have to be careful. It's no longer funny 
What is happening in Africa must be stopped, and it must be stopped now. When you see the signs in any one of us that we don't have the country at heart, we want to become presidents at any cost, it does not matter who dies in the process. You must stop us as Zambians. So I want all of us in politics, let us be bigger than our own personal ambitions. Zambia must come first. Let's let's get in some some messages. We've we've got people that uh, have been texting us and and trying to ask uh, participate in the program to ask a few questions. So most of them are coming from our Facebook page. Uh, we're going to get them. Um, uh, we've got New Life Tanda Tanda Varai on behalf of Zimbabwe and says We are fully behind you, Doctor Nevas Sakila Mumba. We've got uh, Tim Jones, Dr. Nevis Mumba did a fantastic job. The only problem is everyone is afraid to say what the truth was. Uh, recent Sibu Senga, for once you have revived the Sadek, you left a lifetime mark of true patriot, Tichafara Nyamutowera. Uh, Sampa Eli Musonda, you have jeopardized our relationship with Zimbabwe as head of the mission. You have jurisdictions to offer any judgment as the con. I think you do not have jurisdiction to offer any judgment as the country in question was, has existing legal system to deal with such. The last one, it was an embarrassment seeing your statement different from statesmen as Nyoma and Chisano. <laughs> there were Sorry. no statements <laughs> from Nyoma or Chisano. So, this is the done. problem. Yeah, so we, we, yeah, yeah, we could react to, yeah. we can, we, we can react to the messages. So. Yeah, this is the problem we have in Zambia. Very few have read the report. That colleague of ours is saying that uh, the statements from Nyoma and uh, Chisama, there were no statements from Nyoma and Chisama because they were not observers in, in that. Uh, President Chisama was there not as an observer. He's working on a total program with the government of, of Zimbabwe. So I, I think that uh, the, uh, for the bigger part, the Zimbabwean people know what we attempted to do. We cannot choose leaders for them. They choose leaders for themselves. We go there as Sadek to stand shoulder to shoulder with them, to ensure that there's credibility in the system that raises their leaders. Because a, a faulty and a flawed um, uh, process produces a flawed result. And therefore, our con con concern is to make sure that every Sadiq nation abides by the, their own regulations that they have set for themselves. So we appreciate those who see what we're attempting to do. But obviously, some people don't read. They are saying that you have brought division within Sadiq. We haven't brought division. This report, because it's based on truth, shall become a sign of, of inner integrity in the region. Remember that Sadiq is coming from a place where it is facing credibility issues. It's facing credibility issues because of what happened in Malawi, for instance. In Malawi, Sadiq gave it their signature that the election was free and fair and it was good. Only a few months later, it was overturned by the courts that it was fraudulent. And when the things were coming out, it embarrassed Sadiq to such levels that it's only now that Sadiq is rising up through this report that we can observe, write what we observe, face the cameras, and tell them that this is what we have found out. If we are wrong, let Zimbabwe go to the uh, process that has been established by Sadiq and lodge their complaint, and they can be heard at that point. But we stand by this report. It is rooted in truth. It is rooted in the people that were professional when they were working on it. Over 20 people went through that. From document. different countries. Mm -hmm. let's, let's get in a caller. Uh, Mr. Piri from Sulawesi. You are through the program? I think we've, we've lost the period, yeah, I think. Yeah, uh, now, the, the, we can stay on on that other question of, you've soured the relations between Zambia and Zimbabwe. Could that be no, the correct no, position? No, no. And, Absolutely. And maybe, and I, maybe that is riding from some attacks that coming from ruling party members Yeah, but Zimbabwe. look, at the That's end of the day, uh, listen to what the Zimbabweans are saying on the streets. I think that's where you can get the judgment of this report. What are they saying? We are political animals, you know? I mean, the political leaders in Zimbabwe, they're also politicians, cadres and stuff like that. They don't think in the line of the order that they have created for themselves. And I have no, no feelings of 
hatred for those who have spoken against me, those who have insulted me, insulted my family, insulted everything that I stand for. They have started investigations in this country around my church, my everything. It's okay with me. It's not the first time it's happening. But when it comes to truth, you, 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 I, I, I don't compromise on that. And the language that was used was moderated in order to make sure that our point is heard. And I think that we need to solve the problem that is there. And the problem is that we are trying to divide ourselves as a continent alongside Western and Eastern. And that's not our battle. And I think Zimbabwe must challenge this report by telling us that point one, two, three is wrong. Then we can go back to their constitution or we can go to this little booklet and show them where we are anchoring that report. And for the Zambians, I would like to advise them. There's no need for us to panic. There's no need for us when somebody goes out there, out of the country, to represent the country. Then we start to, 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 to hate. I know that you may not like the person that has gone, that has been asked to play that task, but you are Zambians. Listen first to all facts before you start to throw So you can insults. make any judgment. Uh, yeah, Doc, let's, get in, judgment. let's get in a caller. Mr. Kasoma from Mansa. Um, uh, you're through to the program. Go ahead and ask your question. Uh, good evening, Rivazio. Good evening, Dr. Mumba. Good evening, sir. Dr. Mumba, uh, I don't have a question as such. I just want to comment. And my comment is that, I'll be very honest with you, I'm so, so proud of you. You are an upright man. In Africa, I think we had gone astray. Because when we look at leaders, we think they, they are like God. I think it's high time we started moving away from that kind of thinking. And it can only take upright people, like you, Dr. Mumba, to show the world that we as Africans are able to see through that this is wrong, this is right. I'm proud of you. Keep it up, Dr. Mumba. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Kasoma. Thank you. So, Doc, you were trying to, to explain. And as you explained that, look, there's no need to divide East and West. Yes. That, that's a big topic now. It is currently. a very big topic. And, and, and then there's the issue of, of, of relations. I think you still have to get back to that. But then you also have to talk to the politics, changing politics on the continent, yeah. Africa, and, and particularly. In and Zimbabwe. that's what I want to do last. But I, I just want to go back a little bit on um, saying that we have divided, you know, or rather we have injured the relationship between Zambia and Zimbabwe. Let me repeat, I did not go to Zimbabwe as a Zambian uh, representing, taking the Zambian Electoral Act or the Zambian Constitution to observe that election. We took the SADC instruments to be able to assess that. If Zimbabwe at any time has a problem with the report, they are not going to come to Zambia. They cannot blame President Haka in the HLM. What is going on is unacceptable. There is no reason why Zimbabwe should involve President Ichilema in this noble task that has been done. He's doing his job, and they must respect him. And some of the statements that are coming from there are totally unacceptable. Whether they have the blessings of the leadership of the country, we don't know. And that's not for me to say. But I think that let's not react so dramatically uh, and drastically to a report that you can challenge through the normal um, avenues that have been provided for us. So I think that we need to run away. Nothing has been uh, injured between Zambia and, 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 and Zimbabwe. The Zimbabwean people and the Zambian people will always be brothers and sisters. We have always been like that, and no politician will divide Zambia and Zimbabwe, whether it's a Zambian politician or it's a Zimbabwean politician. We are one people, and we shall remain one people. So. You were asking about this message the, of caution to the Zambians. Mes oh, a, a caution and, and. to the Zambians. I have Changing already, trends. I have already mentioned here today, let's not act like we don't know what's happening on the continent of Africa. The coups that are taking place in the western part of our continent, these are realities on the ground. How do they start? They start with un, un, unruly political leaders, desperate political leaders, who start to make inflammatory statements against those in government or their friends who are leading them, and they try to make them look like these are people who are being used by 
other nations to impose themselves here. I mean, I was very disappointed to hear somebody in Zimbabwe saying that Harry Nuitlema was installed by by imperialists. How do you say that? How do you explain that to the millions that lined up at four, five o'clock in the morning to vote? Are those the imperialists that you're talking about? And we don't take that kindly. We don't take that kindly because at the end of the day, they're trying to prepare the ground for a swell of people start to say, yes, he's been put, placed there by imperialists. No, that is not acceptable. And I say to Zambians, watch us as politicians. Please watch us. Stop clapping for us when we make these statements that we are making in order to win political mileage. It's not a game. There are lives in this country that need to be protected. There is a future for our children and our grandchildren. And it's not about you becoming president. It's about Zambia being protected. And we need to be fair in the manner we campaign for the high office of president. And I think it's important that all of us Zambians be on a lookout. Stop clapping for things that are going to destroy the nation. Let's clap for things that will unite the nation. Lastly, Doc, under a minute, maybe, what lessons can be picked from the Zimbabwean election? We're running out of time. I, I'll I think, give you a minute. I, I think that we have a situation now where Zambia can learn the fact that Whenever we are challenged by the community to which we belong, in this case, Sadiq, we should not react like, you know, we have no other avenues to react. I think that Zimbabwe should show the fact that they are members of Sadiq, and I'm sure they will do that. And I want to close by saying that I do not want us to go home thinking that there is a break between Zambia and Zimbabwe. This was not a Zambian program. This was a Sadiq program. And we are sure that Zimbabwe will come right after it all settles down. Tomorrow they're having the inauguration. And once they get back to work, I'm sure that all the engines of peacemaking between the two of us and amongst the Sadiq nations will continue to happen. I'm very positive. We don't need anything to divide us. We need everything to bring so us together. Two countries. Dr. Mumbai, Thank you so much. it's been a pleasure having you on the program. Thank you so much. We've been watching Sunday interview and this evening our guest was Dr. Nebas Mumba, former Vice President and Head of Sadiq Electoral Observation Mission to Zimbabwe. I'll be back next week sometime. Doesn't be long. All right. Yes, that was the interview there from... Uh, Right, uh, hold it right there. Hold it right there. We just want to spend a few more minutes here. Um, interview there from Zambia National Broadcasting Corporation on um, the recent mission by Dr. Mumba. And we would like you to stay put just for a few minutes as we dissect as Zimbabweans just to try and uh, discuss. And also hear from you, Zimbabweans. It's coming up to exactly uh, a minute to 9 p.m., a minute to 8 p.m. right here in the United Kingdom. And we want to spend a few more minutes. Just hold it right there, Zimbabwe. This is a live program, and we've just been listening to Dr. Nevers Sumba, Nevers Mumba, who was the head of mission for the SADC in Zimbabwe. He has presented his report. And obviously, that preliminary report has been handed over to the SADC chairperson for politics, who is the current president of Zambia. He's going to present it to the Troika, which is composed of three countries, Zambia being one of them. The other country is Tanzania, and I believe the third country is Namibia. So once that report has been presented to the Troika, they will present it to the, all the member states to decide on the next steps there's nothing that is going to change in terms of the timeline uh tomorrow is still going to be the inauguration uh, mr Mnangagu is going ahead with the inauguration tomorrow as you heard from the interview there's nothing that is actually changing apart from the fact that the truth is now out there that the elections were not free and fair many of you are wondering what's going to happen next and we want to just dissect and, and, and discuss just for a few minutes before 
we close this program. Once again, thank you very much for taking time to listen to the interview. Just some highlights from that interview. Dr. Mumba uh, insists that the report that he presented as a preliminary report was the fairest report they could ever produce. He didn't write the report himself. The report was written by other observers. As the chairperson, all he does is to read out the statement. That, that's what he said. And after you'd read the statement, obviously, there's a serious backlash against the person, Mumba, as he was just alluding to in the interview. He says his family right now is under serious attack. And there are people that are looking for him in Zambia. We don't know whether these people are, have been sent by ZANOPF, but his life is pretty much at risk. That is what we, that's what he was implying in the interview. And also, he tried to explain that the whole process that led to the report that they released last week. He, him and the uh, President Itilema Kahende of Zambia did not alter even a single word in the report. They were just presented the report which they read out. The members of the Observer Mission, who is uh, the Observer Mission is composed of judges and lawyers, are the ones who wrote the report. And his input in the report was just to read it out in a press conference. So that's what he said there. And we want to spend a few minutes in Zimbabwe. I know many of you are burning to say something. We're just going to open the lines here. Uh, we'll share a link in the chat room if you want to vent your anger, if you want to say something or you want to comment on the just ended interview with Mr. or Dr. Nevers. Um, Mumba there was the SADC head of the Observer Mission to Zimbabwe. Uh, in case you're joining us, let me just give you a rundown of what was said in the interview. Dr. Mumba gave a breakdown of what they think the report hasn't changed since what you guys are already aware of. So they're preparing a final report. So we are still at the preliminary report, which was read a few days ago. That report was not prepared by him. It was prepared by members of the observer mission that is comprised of lawyers and judges from different countries within Sadak. Only bit that he played in the whole scheme of, of things is to read out the report. President Hakaende, who is the chairperson of the Sadak organ on politics that actually sent this mission, did not alter or add any single word in that report, according to Dr. Mumba. And uh, what is going to happen next is it's going to be presented to the Sadak Troika made up of Zambia, who are the chair who chairs that Troika and uh, Tanzania and Namibia. So those three presidents will decide on what happens next. It's going to be presented to the rest of the uh, members within SADC. And Zimbabwe will be given a chance to obviously respond to the issues that have been raised in that report. From there, we don't know how long this is going to take. It's, it's probably water under the bridge now, but we're just trying to tell you and, and and break down what's going to happen from here so we want to hear from you guys what you think will be the way forward the inauguration is not impacted in any form according to dr mumba they are still going ahead as planned tomorrow but i'm sure most of you are burning you want to vent you whether it's anger or you want to celebrate um what he has just transpired i think we're at a point now where nothing is materially going to change from the report and nothing and remember these guys don't have any power to change anything all they're doing is to observe and report and uh, even if they were to write a scathing report the worst that could happen is maybe a censure from sadak so it is now left to our zimbabweans to decide what's going to happen next so we are just going to share a link here if you want to say something, if you want to contribute to the conversation, that um, especially to the interview that we just had, I'm going to share a link here. Let's discuss as Zimbabweans. We just want to gauge the mood on the ground. What do you think should happen next? In case you're joining us, please follow our socials for the link to this discussion. Say good to everyone. I'm going to talk to you soon. I'm going to talk to you soon. I'm going to talk to September. 2026, 2023. We are right here on Zimbabwe Daily, just trying to look at uh, or to dissect the interview. 
that Dr. Mumbai has just said. If you want to take part, you think you want to contribute to the discourse, please just follow the link that we've shared in the, in the, in the, in the, in the chat room there. Let's hear from you. What do you think should be the next thing from here? It doesn't look like this not much is going to change. I've already started receiving interest from the community. This is a live program, by the way, in case you're joining us. We are right here on Zim Daily. It's a live program and it is coming up to a few minutes after 9 p.m. This is six minutes after 9 p.m. already time and six minutes after 8 p.m. if you're in the United Kingdom right here on Zim Daily. So I've got someone here who is just, I've shared the link there. We want to hear from you guys. I don't know if you, Ru can hear me. Hi, hi Ru, can you hear me? Hi, yes, I can hear you. Yeah, thanks for joining us tonight. Um, first thing first, um, I think Kutisoni, um, the, what we can actually hope for is diplomatic segregation. Uh, in other words, um, if SADC didn't see the elections as befitting, um, they shouldn't then um, uh, accredit him as a, 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 a legitimate president. Um, likewise with uh, AU, like eyes, likewise with any other um, member of the international community, until reforms uh, are addressed. Um, let him be president where Kovaka voted way Koko. Right. That's the way um I will mix because I believe um a true Zimbabwean should be able to flex in both Bonangani uh Rumela being a president, La Pabam Vote La Kunemakaya, Vanya Twitter president, the Koko Kumar Zefe Koko, Jipere Papa, because then it then becomes questionable which is only our president Eruzi right. uh, Kwani in diplomatic uh, platforms right. that's my, my my perspective all right thanks Ru. before you you obviously disengage you are saying Kuti, we're trying to look at the practicality of what you've just said there is yeah it, are, are we just saying things or is it do you see that happening actually Kuti Awajita president Okumamisha we're trying to well, make the thing is, forward. Well, yeah. the thing is, well, the thing is, if he has diplomatic isolation, then clearly what else is left? Because uh, the cities haven't uh, embraced him. So where else, where else is he embraced? If he cannot, uh, like if he's isolated diplomatically, um, that makes, uh, I mean, it, it's, it, he, he cannot afford to put himself in a predicament. Like, for example, say North Korea. North Korea, North Korea is diplomatically isolated, but they've got the means to, 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 to keep going with the diplomatic isolation, isolation whereas Zimbabwe doesn't, you see. Mm. And, right. and then now, if we, so do you get what I'm saying from that level? Yes. If you look at it, I'm giving an example of, of another nation which has diplomatic isolation north korea and right. uh but they've got the means to keep going as they are whereas right. zimbabwe doesn't have the means to uh, continue as they are and then secondly um mm -hmm. in but the do city you see that Ru, do, you, do you see that actually happening given sadak is pretty much uh, as you know is a bunch of uh, well uh, that's the thing um liberation I movements think... that pretty much would endorse this I, I was reading an article i don't know if you saw it on 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 twitter and and and, and on yeah. facebook where uh -huh. this was a 2013 uh, minutes from a joke you know the these guys that run pretty much the country the security yeah. forces where they were showing that there were there is actually a budget that is allocated to the liberation movements in every election so they would send money about a billion dollars across mm. all these swapos and the ANCs and and the Frelimos of, of this world just to bribe them so that they give them a good uh, report and and what you're saying definitely makes sense but what I'm just trying to understand here how, how practical is this well, I think I think the citizens of uh, Zimbabwe certainly can uh, work with 
what I what I perceive as a current rift in Sadak, because you're starting to see um, nations with uh, a revolution with that revolutionary background pegged against the more liberal nations. So I don't know if you're if I'm the only one who's seeing it, but I certainly see a rift, mm -hmm. especially considering with how how uh, Zambia is taking on. Uh, things that there is a bit of a rift in Sadak. You've got the traditional revolutionary parties pegged against the liberal parties who have had change of governance, who've had younger leaders, who've seen you know different governance, um, you know, uh, across the board. Um, again, on a on a second level, uh, I don't know whether you're aware of it, but we're also seeing the influence of the Cold War. On the situation because you've got BRICS, um, uh, BRICS affiliated uh, f affiliation, so you, that's where you've got South Africa, Russia, and China, you know, coming in versus you know NATO. Obviously, NATO NATO is is keeping you know a distance, but certainly right. you know the the Cold War issues also. So you, those cracks. I believe are, 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 are issues where the citizens can um, use to lobby their cause uh, with Sadak. All right. Ru, I would yeah. really love you to stay. It just that I just yeah. need to add a few more people. I, I think you're making... Okay, that's all here. right. Yeah, just ha right. hang on for a second. Um, I've got Kalimbu okay. here. Can, can you hear me, Kalimbu? Yes, Kalimbu, can you hear me? All right, I think you're on mute. Do you want to unmute yourself? Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you, Kalimbu. Thanks for joining us. What would you like to say? Uh, thank you very much for affording uh, me this time. Right, uh, I've been following uh, our hero, Dr. Nevers Mumba. That's, uh, that was great. And thank you very much for bringing him on your life. Right. Uh, I think uh, I wouldn't want to represent every citizen of Zimbabwe, but what I think is everyone's wish is that they should uh, assess that report. Like uh, he said, that there is a preliminary report that is available, that the one that everyone knows, they are yet to prepare the final one, which might not be different from the first one. Right. What I pray for is that the Sadak Troika, aided by His Excellency, the President of Zambia, Akaide Ishlema, they must please afford us a real election, a fresh, free, fair, and credible election in Zimbabwe. That's what we are just crying for. Right. We are all over the world. Everyone knows. I saw that Trade Operations Command. Uh, what do we call it? Uh, that budget for these uh, revolutionary parties. We can't be talking of the revolution. Like Zimbabwe, we got independent in 1980. That's more than 43 years ago. We can't be talking about war in this era. We should be talking about something progressive. We should be talking about uh, advancement of knowledge, everything, technology. So, and ZANPF has been like that. They would do whatever it takes to remain in power. So my prayer is that, uh, and I'm also happy, uh, like you said, Tanzania is part of the head of uh, the SADAC. I heard that uh, the president of Tanzania turned down the offer to come, instead she will send someone, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, that is the case. So, I, I, I think you're 100% right. I think she has um, apparently sent a lower delegate to attend tomorrow's inauguration. I'm just trying to understand how practical, you, you know, we are trying to map a way forward here. You are suggesting mm, yes. that the chairperson of uh, the Troika, the Sadak Troika, comprised of uh, the current president of Zambia and Tanzania and Namibia should call for a free and fair election. How would that work? I, I, I mean, I, they can't obviously uh, I don't think they've got any power to 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 do that. All they can do is to maybe give it a, make some recommendations. Say yeah. next time when you have election. But look, uh, I think we'll be hiding behind our fingers. Look, some of the issues that uh, enforced uh, that made those uh, Western countries to put sanctions on Zimbabwe 
are also electoral reforms and the NPF is refusing to enforce electoral reforms so if sanctions cannot force uh Emma Solomonangagwa and this government to to, to 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 adjust so that they accommodate everyone not talking of uh diaspora vote just electoral reforms to say ZEC must be neutral unlike the situation that you see Chigumba, they say she's uh, ex to Winston Chitando, there is uh, Kembo Mohadi's daughter there, there is Jasper Mangwana. All those people, they have got direct links to ZANU-PF. So there is no way that uh, ZANU-PF can fight itself as ZANU-PF. Right. Uh, so there is Nick no... Mangwana is there. Yeah, sorry, Kalim, but uh, where are you calling us from? From South Africa. All right, from South Africa. This is not the Joseph Kalimbo we know, right? This you just call yourself. Uh, I, I, I'm Kalimbo. I'm Joseph, actually. So uh, Joseph Kalimbo is my name. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thanks a lot for for that. I, I just want to gauge. And I'm I'm trying to understand what is the most practical way forward here, and you are suggesting that we should demand a fresh and a, a new election. I uh, just want to understand how feasible that is uh whether it's even feasible for us I'm, to call for yeah i i, I am not sure of uh, the guidelines for sadak uh, how they handle such issues when it happens that the observer mission rules to say this election was not free fair and credible i don't know the next steps forward but maybe if it's possible that they go outside ultra virus outside their scope to say given this situation and to be honest like uh now dr nevers mumba is feeling unsafe his family feels it's unsafe his personal life is feeling it's unsafe it probably should prompt these guys to say no if zanu pf can go this far to threaten the head of the, the the observer mission like he was saying that he is not the one who drafted that uh that, that report it's right. a gathering it's a gathering of what they observed so right. if they are threatening him with death so probably there should be a stricter measure a more stringent measure to say we should restart it i i don't know how feasible it is i don't know how how possible it is to happen but i think that's everyone's prayer even if you check the triple c that's what they are calling for to say no guys it doesn't work that we have to go to concord it's the same we, we, we just know our fate if we go to, to, to the malavaled uh all justice right. system all right yes mr Kalimba, yes. can i can i just ask you to hang on a few minutes i i've got a few other uh panelists who uh also trying to be part of this uh i will be I understand. Actually, yes just bear with me I, one second I understand. i've got mutape and white can you hear me Tapi? yes i can hear you can you hear me yeah please go ahead with your comment in case you're joining us let me just uh, remind those that may also want to comment what we're trying here is to understand what we think as zimbabweans is the way forward it has been um a roller coaster, I think, for the past seven days. We've gone through the elections. We have had the results announced, and there was that report from SADC. And now we've just been listening to Dr. Nevers Mumba as uh, interview there with Zimbabwe, Zambia National Broadcasting Corporation. And we're just trying to dissect and uh, try and understand what Zimbabweans feel is the way forward. So, Mr. Mutabi, do you want to go ahead with your comment, please? Yes, so um, firstly, um, this is the first time um, in the history of Zimbabwean elections that we see Sadak being forthright with the ruling party. So from a participation point of view, I think that the CCC did the right thing in terms of participating because had they not participated, and caused the issues that came out of the elections we would not have had this report coming out so so that's the first thing so this is this is the divergence away from how sadak have operated in the past in as far as the zimbabwean situation is concerned where we get to hear a direct criticism of not necessarily zanu pf 
but that of Zek and how the uh, 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 that institution has handled elections in, in, in Zimbabwe. In, in terms of the practicalities going forward, what I would suggest is that this is now up to the people of Zimbabwe, right? This is now the people against the state. Now, the, the issues that we have in Zimbabwe is that Zimbabweans are uh, very self-preserving people. Um, I think the spirit of selflessness has gone away from us as a people. We tend to want to wait for someone to do things for us. Um, and I think until we get back to the the ethos that drove us into the liberation struggle as a people in the first instance, until we get back to that point, you know, the practicalities become difficult because the 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 things that need to be resolved here, in as far as ZANU-PF is concerned, Ed Be Chris Mchangwa's comments at Chatao that if you want to wrestle power from ZANU-PF. Not unless you're willing to go out there and fight us, we are not going to end over power on a silver platter. I think that was very clear. All right. So, so you are suggesting that we we need to be more uh, radical about the response here in terms of uh, way forward. Are you suggesting? Uh, uh, absolutely, to... absolutely. You, you are not you are not going to this the, the poor Zanupia for the kids' gloves. It's not going to happen. Believe me, this is going to be a bare knuckle fight. Uh, 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 and I propose to, to go even further to say, without a struggle of deposing the unfair, it's not going to happen. All right, it's not All going right. to happen. All right. Yes. Thanks. Thank you very much, Mr. Mutabe, for your comment here. I, I just want to hear if, if you want to stick around. Please feel free. We'll come back to you. I've got another panelist here, Mr. White. I can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes. Can uh, yes. And thanks for joining us. As you have been listening or following the discussion that we are having here, we're trying to maybe discuss as Zimbabweans what we think is the plausible way forward from everything that has happened in the past seven days. We've just been listening to Dr. Mumba there, who reiterated um, and um, went on to say that the report which they presented last Friday is still binding. Uh, there's still a final report to be released, but there are some irreg irregularities they saw in the election and that he is not the author of that report. All he did was to present the report. What do you think is the way forward from here? Also, given that tomorrow ZANU-PF is going ahead with the inauguration of Mr. Nangagwa as the next president. Um, personally, I think um, the only way forward right now uh, is to go maybe to sub and the regional courts maybe because uh, right now i don't think it's logical to go to the concord or any other local courts here yes i because... think they've they've already dropped that as an option and i, I don't think the triple c is considering concord in fact the time allowed for them to have done yeah. that i'm sure it is elapsed so a option you yeah up they can go meet it among Guana, Kuti inauguration itiki. And according to Mr. Mumba, who is a diplomat, um, he's not going to say anything that's outside what the law permits. All he can suggest is to say Kuti Zimbabweans should engage and try and uh, find a legal way forward. Sakamimi Munofungi Zirauti, the Zubizwa Tingaiti within uh, Pamurairo. Obviously, we don't want to promote anything that's outside the law here. So the Pamurairo and the Zubizu Atinga Iti Guti Tiende Rimberi Senyik. Maybe um, what we could do is, I think maybe we as Zimbabweans, we should just uh, sit back and continue to be harmonized as we, uh, as we have been. For the past week um 
because right now uh, I can see even in the ZANPF got a, uh, things are not okay because if if you look at uh, how they are congratulating the president uh, it raises question marks like uh, the VP took time to congratulate the yes boss uh, and even now if you watch uh, the local news stations um, you find that uh, the saying uh, Midlands is congratulating the president much east is congratulating the president of which it should be done uh, as a party just like San PF is congratulating the president for this and that but you can see that the party is not united mm. and there's something cooking up in the party within the party and outside the party all so, right so, things are going to implode and it could be vacha pesira va jinyana pauru vega pasina any outside influence uh, i'm very sure things are going to implode but we as citizens we have to do something maybe uh, we have to protest peacefully all right all right so thank you for mr white and dinner mr show panapa eh hello mr show can you hear me Hello. Yes. All right. Kuneva Chango Vamukutibata Tri Panopa Zim Daily, Zimbabwe Daily tonight on the third of September. The year of Allah twenty twenty three. Tsugamoti Tuani San is Samuti Sibwani Sani La Pangen to Enzagaleo. Basically Doctor Nevers Mumba. Them interviewer with Zambia National Broadcasting Corporation with Zamuti labo eba abaxhasile ukuthi kwahamba njani ese Zimbabwe ivike phezi le yantsho yena ukukhulumile watsho yena ukuthi report abayi presenta nge Friday last week that report still stands bona bathi babona kule zinto ezayenza kalayo abanga thabanga ngazo so into lezi yana kumele isataki ikhangela ukuthi ngayenzana ukuthi at least amazi wonke esataki Babono to bring hands and again by a corn. So, who's again Zagala from at least from tomorrow? Says Wooty, who Zambian president, who say Bonilly reportedly, who's a Kuluma Labanya Bagabang too, who make up the Troika, who president was a Tanzania, who president was Namibia. Those are the recipients of the report they're going to discuss. This one would be an end and a report. A corner would be born with the Bengay Hambisa to the rest of the member states. Then they will give Zano PF an opportunity to respond to all the issues that are raised in there. And you can imagine how long that's going to take. This is not going to be a, a two day or three day process, it's probably take months or even years before we hear a response. Zakadaru and it taka me out it in the report your sector of Kwanda it and some of them would tell you report Yandi Sokuna, Mr. Ichilema, a kind and dear chairperson, where organ on politics, uh, who is the biggest stakeholder in, in all this. So he has to call Wamwewa Gavaviri, President of Namibia, now President of Tanzania, which by discuss a report here to Kanava Vumirana, you know, by end this were. To the rest of the member states, then I think they will give Zanu PF an opportunity to respond to all the issues that have been raised. Given the way governments operate in in generally in Zimbabwe, and you can imagine also how we generally operate as SADC, we don't expect to hear anything in the next weeks or even months. This is a process that will probably take a lot of time before that final report is adopted. So once that report has been ab- adopted, is if all the member states are, are not happy with the way elections were conducted in Zimbabwe, what we suspect is going to happen is uh, they will either uh, decide on what sort of censure they will um, censure Ichapua, Zimbabwe, and Itika. Uh, whether they will just give them a slap on the wrist or can I divide next time we it and it. 
that uh, sense is what is going to be decided once they've all agreed that elections were not conducted in a free and fair way. But what's most likely to happen is Vacha, the other member states, because we've got an issue here, a burning issue, where liberation movements are doing whatever is in their power to remain in power. We saw the report that before even the elections, before you have the elections, Swapo, Frelimo, ANC, BDP, Botswana, MPLA, Angola, and all these so called Chama Chama Mapinduzi in Tanzania, they call themselves liberation movements. So, what Zano PF, it actually has a budget of about a billion dollars that it allocates <laughs> towards <laughs> these liberation movements. Sakavani Gevachi, Vajiva, Marimu envelope in anticipation of uh, of support. Kanama results. That's why you find with Vanana Tanzania before they even read the report, they were quick to congratulate Nangago because Vaninga Waka to Jigamari Saga. I've just been saying it's it's most it's it's a done deal pretty much. This is some of the things that are now coming out. Those Rugitik and those Wangas Jitika Makoresa. Second, don't have a problem. If I put you, if I consent, citizen, but I put prosper. Uh, let me just uh, give these gentlemen um, an opportunity to contribute to the discourse here. Uh, DJ, you know, Murugunde Zoe. Murugunde Zoe, boss. Yes, Muda Guti China Zoe. Okay. In any, what I want to say is, when I start and AU and stuff, those who do not agree with what Zek did, with what uh, was Zek's conduct. I think it's better uh, they try to to, to, to like isolate us or to, to, to create a I minority mean, if 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 the election is going to be to say that what do they do? But I think even if they isolate us, we go back maybe to the situation like hey, 2008 or something. It's better we suffer for one year than for us suffering under the ends of Sanupi for the next day until we die. I mean, how many, how many years? Because now they will... Can I uh, 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 isolate us? Not, not sanctions as such, mm -hmm. but we are saying, uh, if they are saying uh, we need a rerun, if you don't do the rerun, we will do this. Whatever is in the Sadat institution. Uh, I don't know if they say, okay, we will put you out of Sadat or, or what. I don't know. Right. But what no. you are saying... Those are not in the But to know to one how feasible is it? Is it not Sadat? Ino kuanisa kuzope sirayati... Zimbabwe is a magaita is as easy right. Saga Taguza Moti Tigu, whether they will come up with some sort of censure or whatever it is. But in those analyses, I'm going to explain out the problem here. Ripon de Guti Zanu PF bribes these liberation movements. So Sadek is made up of, I don't know, nine or whatever countries there, 11, I, I, I don't remember the number. But a large majority of those countries, they are run by liberation movements. Tanzania, Kuninunzi, Chama Chama, Mapinduzi, it's like Zanu PF. You know, since liberation, they've been running the country. You've got Frelimo in Mozambique. They, pre they pretty much run the country like a one party state. You've got the ANC in, in South Africa. You've got um, the BDP in Botswana. You've got Swapo in, uh, in, in Namibia. Then you've got MPLA in Angola. These parties, they are not going to. Avazgumbosia. <laughs> Simba without a fight. That's why they oil each other up. Because once you, if they had let Zanu PF, if they had, uh, if, if Zanu PF had lost, it would have meant Kuti, these liberation movements are now, they are now cracks within these liberation movements. The next thing that's going to happen is when Tanzania have an election, Bajati will have a my liberation movements, and then this will cascade all the way to South Africa. So they're trying to protect themselves. Second, those are true funds. They Given that scenario, Yeguti Matore Memkati, 
we can expect kuti maybe sadak ichat ya muna kuti my election zvakana aka saka chita imamo my election and then i'm saying kuti that scenario is unlikely because of the circumstances uh, and, around these liberation movements yeah okay sorry to add something there like yes. uh, just a matter or kuti the, the issue now with rerun or doing the elections are fresh the problem now is zanu pf can do anything to win if let's say because this situation now is volatile we cannot say this cannot happen this can happen because these guys they are panicking so we don't know what is going to happen so let's say there is a rerun or there is a, a, a redo i don't i don't know what to call it it's supposed to be manned by i don't know who will come or or, or what it was if it's, it will be a rerun and being conducted by mainly zan pf or by a few people who observe and being run by zan pf they will win more right right no 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 yeah thanks a lot for your contribution you rerun in a likely scenario that in an unlikely scenario that we have a rerun maybe we can then demand kuti a Zek does not preside over that election maybe Sadak would be the electoral commission yeah, here. yeah. yes yes go ahead. okay i need a peter yes go go ahead mr joe hello hello moyo can you hear me yes again yes please go ahead um Mm-hmm. On the issue of um, uh, rerun, I can open this out and show you the rerun. As long as we as a community and one, I think it's it because it's a ingori, it's an OPF. Because this day and day, too, na kuti team rakawa nda the number offices. My office was it and I can go to one of my general one of them's animal so I'm not from what in this GP what what do you think is the way forward from here the way forward I think maybe good to can I take one is a bit of my elections I know I don't control one a maybe foreign body maybe sad can I each one is out as usual Otherwise, I'm no. Could could can start. He maybe she join an army. Would find would an army at Ingo is anu pia foot. Was would find would what happened? Because we saw Mugabe. This a it Ingo a imposition ye army. So <laughs> at the end, the road contribution sa army. Inongo is a footy monoai. We no kwanza control. Right. So I think panongo da kuti tse maybe. Can a Kurkunzi sad or AU can do something? A Twitter, my free and fair elections, they do. I see now kids run now or whatever. I think those no one out of Chandil. All right, all right. Thanks a lot, Mr. Moyo. Tina, Mr. Joe, Mr. Joe, can you hear me? Can I also comment? Yes, please go ahead. Right. Um, myself, the way I'm looking at the situation in Zimbabwe. I think uh, it's high time now um, we forget about liberation struggle like what others have said. Uh, the If we go back to 1979, when Smith uh, targeted my elections before the 1980, Smith wanted to run the elections on his own, but uh, European Union uh, declined that but you know if you run the elections yourself it's obvious you're always going to keep yourself in power so they 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 gave the money to run the elections and they were the ones like a on the my votes which means that still can still happen in Sadak because right now if you look at dr mumba yes zanu pf what is happening right now okay? Warku Chema, Dr. Mumba did not write the report to Zani PF. Dr. Mumba wrote the, uh, the report to Zek. But 
Having written that report to Zek, it's ZANU-PF who jumped the wagon because their dirty laundry was pulled under the bed and spread out so that everyone now sees what has been happening. That's why they are so bitter with Dr. Mumba, bitter with the Zambian president. But the truth of the matter, we can't continue to talk about the liberation struggle. If they feel that they still want to talk the, about the liberation struggle, they can just take us back to 1980, where they took, the, took us off. Then we can take off from there, because we are now talking of the 21st century. We cannot continue to have those 80-year-olds in the offices. They are far, far behind technology. They are far, far behind development. Even if you look at the campaign which was being done by Mnangwaga, he had no structure. He was making jokes at every rally he went. He never uh, 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 made a positive contribution such that people were and if they can say, well, yes, Mnangwaga campaigned. He didn't campaign. But if you look at Triple C, they had a manifesto. Every rally way they went, it was different things they are going to put on the table. But this government, what it has been doing, if you remember, there's the, the, the when Mugabe was uh, refusing to come out of power because he said he does not believe with this current uh, government. In the Sadak region, I know some have been talking of Tamachama Pindus in, in ETC. The truth of the matter, the person they liked was Mugabe. Nobody likes Munangagwa because Munangwaga came through coup. He did not win the elections. So these other bodies now, they don't like... If it was Mugabe today contesting the elections, everyone, all of the Sadak region, they could have said, sent their congratulations. Well done, President Mugabe. But because of the way Munangwaga did, nobody supports Munangwaga. Hmm. That's why now this report has been written very thorough so that what has been happening in the past is now being exposed. You All right. So, so, so what do you think? So, sorry, I didn't yeah. catch your name. What, what was your name again? My name is Rod. 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 Yes. Yeah, so, Mr. Rod, what, what do you think is the way forward from here because i mean we've all been listening to what has happened what is transpired the, the, the way with... the way forward we need elections which are monitored by external let's forget about zek we don't need zek anymore all right so how do we get to that because that, that, that we, we are trying to come up with some solutions here so we, we need elections i think almost everyone right. agrees with the, 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 the only way this is why I said let's go back to 1979 before ZANPF came into power. Between Smith and Muzorewa, that election was not, the, it was not held by the Rhodesia Electoral Commission. It was held by the European Union, which was an independent body. Because today, Smith could have still remained in power today. But it was held by a foreign body so all right what what no no that's uh, that's this yeah, what sorry, Mr. Rod, is I, this yeah i like the solutions that you're bringing saga we need yes. um the way forward is to hold a free and fair elections and have yes. um, uh, them presided by an outside body not zek yes. definitely but yes. how do we get to that how, how how do we get to that should we lobby sadak or the au how how do we actually right. get so you see what is happening now, because ZANU PF knows. If you remember quite well, I will, I've been following this. Chris Mutrango was being asked if Sadak says to you rerun elections, are you going to say we don't want, or we are coming out of Sadak? He could not answer that question. The only person who could answer that question was Robert Mugabe. Look, right now they are crying to come back into the Commonwealth, but they can't say we are going to do away with Sadak. Because if they say we are going to do with Sadak, we are landlocked. Everything, they can't fly their planes anyway. 
So they have to bow to Sadak. Because if they say Sadak, we are coming out, Sadak will say, okay, if you are coming out, you can't use our airspace because you are not part of Sadak. All right. So Sadak All right. is in control. Yes. Mr. Rodi, I, I think yes. you, you make very important points. Um, I'm just, yeah, I think you're right. There's no doubt, Kuti, my elections are gate where a week or so ago were fraudulent. Uh, these were, the election was a sham election. Yeah. Yeah. Every, everyone agrees. And um, Zek has no capacity or they are not independent enough to conduct an election. We all agree, Kuti. Zek, I, I mean, what surprises me is actually how we even allowed them to <laughs> run this election, given that Mwanawa Frederick Shava, you know, Frederick Shava is the foreign yes. affairs minister, is a commissioner. Mwanawa yes, Mohadi see. is a commissioner. Yes. Mwanawa Obit Mpof is a commissioner in Zek. Mwanawa yes. Ahmad Zamangwana is a commissioner in Zek. Yes. These are things that are coming out now. I, I, I don't know if others knew, but in any when I found out a few days ago, I was surprised. Could we, how do you even have a ZEC that is where 90% of those so-called commissioners are known ZANU-PF. They are not just ZANU-PF supporters, but they are family members of senior ZANU-PF members. I mean, it, officials. If, if you think about there was one commissioner who was the spokesperson for ZEC, why do you think he was kicked out? Because he was not part, in, part of the puzzle. That's why he was kicked out. So everyone in ZANPF, everyone in ZEC, they knew once Triple C comes into power, it means all our jobs are finished. Right. So they had to protect their yes, families. Yes. So yes. the other thing which I yes, uh, Mr. Roddy, can I just ask you yeah. to yeah, just uh, just a minute because I, I I want to hear from it from two I, other I've guys. Just one point, one point yeah. to make. Then I will. I'll, one point which I wanted to make is this. If they were going to do a, a, a rerun, the best we can protect the vote of every citizen is all these observers, they need to go in the rural. They leave Harare, Bulawayo, because ZANPF in Harare, Bulawayo, Mtari, they can't win. The observers, they have to go in the villages so that they can actually see what is happening. All right. Okay. Yes, that's my point. No, thanks, Mr. Rodi. I appreciate your contribution. You have a wonderful... Where are you calling us from? I'm calling from the UK. From the United Kingdom. Thank you very much yes. for your time. Tina, Mr. Chando Panabana, concerned citizen. Hello, guys. Can you hear me? Hello? <coughs> hey, how's it? Yes, Rise. Hello? I shall be good with you. Yes, uh, just hold on. Dina Chando, na concerned citizen. Let's give Chando a. Let's hear from you, Mr. Chando, if that's okay. Go ahead. Okay. Hi, guys. Hello? Yes. Yes, it runs. Why, uh, Mr. Chando, can you hear me? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, please. Good evening. Um, Yes, Tafadzwa and concerned citizen. Just hang on, guys. Let's hear. It. We will. I'll just keep. I'll give you guys a mic. In the next few minutes, let's just hear from what I mean from Mr. Chando here, and then we will hear from others after this. Yeah, go ahead, my brother. Right. In any chino chukuru chanti na chondo no kuzira ndeje kuboti isusta kato pia peku bata ni sadik. Chipoti yaka to payo yaka to kwa ni yaka da. Saga ndojo tinu jacho tinu fano rambata kabati rejo chuo even kwese kwa tunungu inda, tunungu taura, sa taura na sadika. Tina shumishu kwe zira kwa msoro pazo iji. Saka tunungu rambataka batira pa nisho. Do way forward ya ngu yo. Thank you. All right. Thanks a lot, Mr. Chando. Uh, Imi Murguti, uh, we should leverage the report ya ganyoro wa nesadak. And um, it's the only weapon that we have, I think going forward and uh can i get to shan sir report my name gt shan this way say point was a new report can i panic with what no that when taken to sadek no go shat no go in the name in a report you can do so that on those are the only sadek to win an eye all right so come on it is a chamisa open them they get an oti ma kurukota you know triple c uh wenda kuhaboroni 
and then they will present themselves to Sadak with the report and then they will challenge the elections that's how you envisage this happening right yeah all right i think there is actually a well, diploma the, 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 i think i saw somewhere on social media where gladys lachoy who's the international affairs kind of interim uh, officer of, uh, for international relations i saw a picture somewhere where they were engaging with um, the ANC i don't know if that is already in flight in terms of trying to engage with the region whether that was an old photo or it's something that happened recently but i still remember seeing jameson timba as well and a few other triple c members so i guess they're trying to engage sadak so you are saying all they need to do is to grab the report and try and uh, speak to all the sadak nations to try and convince them to do something but given kuti mangwana kuna inauguration and uh, i'm just thinking kuti how do you reverse that because kana munato declare a president ka paninge ba kuti ndo kuti because once there is inauguration you you know kuti kana mukadzi wa Syria kana mukadzi ka asiri wako hambo ita wako nyango akada kumtora zviginya hafi akaita wako mhm Right. Anu ngodzo kachete kune muridzi wacho. And it came name to not Sadak might will find a way of reversing whatever is going to happen yeah. tomorrow. Okay. Now thanks a lot Mr. Chamber yeah. to now consent citizen. Can you hear me? Yes my brother how's it? Yes. Kuri se. Ah shab shab kuri se. Bichana bichana. Ine uri kuona unge nde zvipi zvatingaite kuti tiende mberi okay. from here. Okay yeah uh, actually nene hango on my personal view I think kuti the only option that we have is to is to have a, a, a protest because now if if we are looking or if we are weighing all these <coughs> uh all these options that we have on the ground first of all yemakoti already yakaramba because this malaba they are waiting for everything and then everything is already sorted out the second thing says okay already uh, uh, sada gave us a, a, a start up but but now now tikadaura uh, mbati chipusha futi sada kyacho kuti okay no guys please intervene those guys they also look like nabo vanenge vakatita se they have been captured that is why they are more of scared to zanu pa it's just that now we are uh, 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 this our hero mr nevas mumba is the one arguchonge uh, he is he is a little bit different from the other uh, old guys that we have been experiencing kumashure kweso because chinogoradza kuti zanu pf they are not even scared of these guys Soon after that pre- preliminary report we could even hear a, a, a press conference when I Chris Mchongwa started to know uh, Mr Nevers Mumba we, co- we call you to order so that itself it tells us what even the sadak itself uh somewhere somehow pane pano gona kuti kuti simudza bagono to see and at the end of the day zanu pf would do everything so is to stay in power eh tikaramba chipusha sadak in other way or let's say we are taking that route we are actually attracting even much more sanctions and with the zanu pf that we know they are not scared of 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 of, of, of sanctions those sanctions they will be brought and they will even uh, work against us isusu pachezvenu as my citizens tisuto pesera ta kusafa and iyo vachingodya vachite vachi benefit nemuri dzao we have been living under sanctions for a long time for more than 10 years now i get and zanu pf zvacho zvairi kupirwa ma sanctions they they are not improving in any which actually means they are not even ready 
to do all those reforms. So are we sure now, even if Sadak intervenes and say, okay, no, Zimbabwe wanted you to do one, two, three. If this guy says, no, we are not going to do that. And then what's the next step? Mm-hmm. Is Sadak going to give us sanctions? And are the ZANU-PFs ready to bend down? All right. That's All a right. question. Yes, that's a question that we need to ask us. So mm. in Inam, I strongly feel with it, the only option that we have is to be vocal is so as Zimbabweans, as citizens, to stand up and say, no, enough is enough. We don't want you, we don't want this, and your time is up. All right. Mr. Concerned Citizen. Murugu Zimbabwe. Okay. Saka Murugu team Mimi. Enough is enough. What enough does that is mean? Enough. Uh, enough really, is enough. You are, are you talking about protest? Are you what what exactly are you referring to here? No, in any personally for now, I strongly feel good. Protest it's it's at least for all these options that we have been weighing, that we all have. It's one option that we never uh uh, explode the courts we tried them at least sadak okay at least for, for for a start we've got a report that is in favor of that but it also needs us so that to put a stem to say okay no sadak what you saw is definitely correct and isusu then because now the problem that we have is as Zimbabweans, we are scared of protest. Mm-hmm. But that is the only option that we are left with. All right. So, All right. Uh, guys, they even give us uh, uh, options. They are telling us, you know, you need to fight us. That's what Chris Bujangba said. And these guys, they actually not ready to give up on this thing. Mm. All right, all so right, Mr. They, they not, or, all right. Okay, right. one last point. Even yes. to say all these abductions that we're having, uh, 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 the violence and stuff. Now, uh, uh, Nevers Mumba, he, he, he just said, good. Even wherever he is now, he's getting some threats. Why? Because of this report. So it actually tells you, Kuti, the enemy that we have is so violent. I, I'm, I'm not suggesting any, any violent protest or whatsoever, but I'm just trying to put up a point, Kuti. The enemy that we have, it doesn't play by the books. It is violent and it is not so easy. So if we fold our hands and expect someone to come and fight our battle, whilst Isusu Pacheshi, we just wait for someone to say, okay, no, Tina, uh, we're coming from Sadak, we condemn whatever that has happened from Zimbabwe, we are your sa- saviors, and then, no, do this. Right? How long is it going to take for us? Because we have waited for more than 43 years for that opportunity to come are we sure right now it is gonna come mm, mm. Uh, yeah. yes yes that, that that's a difficult one we're between a rock and a hard yes. place here let's just hope could something is going to give in um i don't know i've been trying to gauge could to try and understand from all the contributions here, Kuti, what is exactly the way forward? I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to get to that answer, but uh, I appreciate your contribution, Mr. Concerned Citizen. I've got Prosper and Moyo. Or these are my last two panelists. Let's hear from you guys, and then we'll call this an evening. Prosper, please go ahead. Yes, Mr. Prosper, can you hear me? All right, now Mr. Moyo, Muripere, Mr. Moyo. Yeah. All right. Timbons walk, Vagua Muritans, walk on a Van Vagasian, I see a Murgufona Murgubimi. Terry Moore Zimbabwe. Murum Zimbabwe. 
sekuona kwenyu eh munofunga munoona kuti zvingaite zvingaitwe kuti tiende remberi from here ani muona rwangu ndewe kutongo involve mangu ma means at such a gamboita because apa pane zvatikatomboita kudara zvikaramba ushano atingarambi tichidzokorodza zvino zvatikamboita to expect ma different results for example vapedza kutaura anga achitaura zvema protest a protest takatombo maita mamwe kaisa vana skala kujere mamwe kaisa president wedo ati nayo saka ndona zve kuti tinogona kuti tichingotendera panzvimbo hani at least tikatombo chaga e mamwe means so that that chambuta ora kuti e vana sadk nana au if they can intervene and help us i think that's the way to go mhm saka ie a une sadage munenge muchiti mune muchida kuti vachamisa ne party yavo vatore petition ne report voenda nayo vono dzama kuti vanganzwe kuti vari kunzi kuri kunzi chi kusadak ne ku eu ne report yava mumba ndite apa adizi vangu position ye 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 triple c right now kuti iwo pasina report iwo pa pa se party vane chi se evidence o chavanga kwanza ushandisa uje to justify their position mm o report is ripo but iwo se party vane ibuza vanga yendi uchi uchiita zvekutaurirwa nemumwe munhu yo vanofara onge vane zvavo futi zvavanofara vanotaura kuti ah isu tsuku kufila onge eh takadzvanyirwa apa ne app but report iyi zviri kutoti tsigira zvatiri kutaura zviri mufuti mu report kana kuti zviri kuwedzera zvino mhm yes no no eh uh, i think we have never tried that and definitely i think in zimbabwe anyone who's aggrieved I don't know whether it's only Triple C in this case or any Zimbabwean for that matter anyone who feels that kuti the whole process wasn't free and fair since we are all members or citizens of Sadak we can take that report and try and engage with Sadak but obviously Sadak is going to engage with someone and ngane umiro wakati o so you would expect at least Triple C to lead that effort But there we are Zimbabweans uh, Zimbabwe it has been a pleasure spending this evening with you it's not an easy uh, subject we have tried our best to see the options available uh, from here we've heard from many many of you and some of the comments that I'm just going to read here before we call it an evening vazhinji venyu muri kuti yo kuti ngati tore report ye sadak timanye naye tizame kuti tiona kuti sada kingaite chi since uh, we have never been in a position where we can actually have a report that seems to support uh, the many voters in Zimbabwe in this case the report seems to suggest the elections were not free and fair so everyone is saying kuti report yo start report le c7 dc njenge mpopo ube ngumpopo wetu going forward and it endorses ukuthi tawara venye kuti the greatest weapon we have right now is the report ndo chombo cha tinacho report ya Mr Nevers Mumba ndo yatinofana kushandisa kuti tizame kuinge jane Sadak i think this is the majority of the i mean the feeling that i'm getting here from what everyone has been saying obviously there are some who are suggesting kuti ngati mboza maima protest eva mo vataura vakati zvuma protest akamboa zama but it did not amount to anything uh, some of you are saying kuti um varuda kutoti zvino uh, they really want there are some who are suggesting a more radical way forward and it but isusu you know sevata bwe na uchatongo kuridzira ndichekuti whatever we do 
going from here should be within what the laws of Zimbabwe permit. We cannot obviously encourage anyone to do anything illegal. Zimbabwe has got laws. I know this is not the message that you are expecting to hear, but uh, we can only uh, encourage you to stay within the confines of the law. One of the options that the C had, which we also felt was not going to amount to anything, is the court route. So they decided against that. I think that's the only plausible option that was available because obviously Sadak, if you are going to challenge this with Sadak, they will ask, why have you not pursued the court route? Obviously, they will say, Guti, my courts are captured. Whether they will agree uh, to that or not, that's another issue. Sakapane, it's, it's, it's not uh, it's easy. It's, 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 it's a difficult situation that we're in Zimbabwe and we are just hoping someone within ZANU is going to come back to their senses. And it uh, president they were they were they were maybe the the next election is in 2028. All we can do is to start preparing now. I think there's that school of thought that's insisting on the um, the earliest bed catches <laughs> the fattest worm, right? This is day seven or five years. If we start today, to to plan to is a polling agents, to is a chichi, auto garaga, gazeta, my polling agents, even Panopera Gore. Tito Zout Guzumba, Gorera, twenty twenty eight, polling agent in Engeri Ponte E. Over at Ofanopua, Mariaki, Omirachi, twenty twenty eight. Though my fungi are with a Mamma Rufu, maybe we did not um, take issue of my polling agents seriously. Pane issue yema mapping of polling stations. I saw some messages on on on, on Twitter. Some are saying, "Kuti, did that really have an impact in terms of um, helping there or at least deciding the outcome?" There are some who are a bit skeptical. Kuti, that effort was put to waste because as unakushanda. But also some argue, "Kuti, daiti sna kuzuita izuzu pamwe daiti siri patiri nas iwo ma seat seventy three akawani kwani triple C." If they had not kept Zek uh, on their toes, maybe Triple uh, C would have received nothing. So you can never be able to measure these things. And it, there is a lot of money that was poured into this campaign. Panevano, Bagaisa Marizavo, Panevano, Agatengesa Mbuzi, Agatengesa Mombe, Agatengesa Wuku, Kutiva Betere, Kuti, my elections, Kuti, or the Triple C and the Remberi. But the 73 seats that they won, it's an, a slight improvement from the previous election of 2018. And obviously now we don't have a situation in Dagi Dagi. Now those MPs belong to Nelson Chamisa, so at least they can fight in parliament. Uh, let us just boycott parliament. I think that's uh, the implication or at least that's what they're implying here in terms of going forward Kuti, without a fresh election we just say no to every election and it whether my councillors cannot my mp cannot match to tungu ramba to no and it i don't know how that is going to pan out but that's the other school of thought it would got gareta ramba and it to rega going to parliament my council waka win what to ramba to us no, no, no. Let's make life easy for them. Let's engage and, and, and use the little that we have to fight back. So it's not an easy solution. Zimbabwe, as you can imagine, I think 
answer you can also but i'm gonna give one person a chance to say something mr tintin can you hear me tintin hello yes yes how are you yes thank you very much you happen to be our last panelist for tonight okay okay thank you uh, the situation in zimbabwe as it stands, the Katasa Snota or Kuru Acho Varimo or Kutunga Mirava to the San Pierre Vachova. I saw a Digo Acho Takuana Gutongo, Itoro, and it's Simba Nikacho, boys. Those of Arguta or that's the only option. Yavaku Tipa Gutit, Nokfana Gutitor, and it's Simba. So, in Ukona Gangu, Pango, you ought to die. Pagawani Koani Gangu. Kwanza kutanga zichi simba vaje zozozo kana ili wondo ah it's fine those those people boys and those are good. All right, mono mono figure size ani? Eight. Size ye yifu. Eight ya yifu boys are forty four forty six. Papa bundi ni kuto pinda boys ah is it stands ah mukuranga. But I want to add in again, they just seem by into the good I seem to go so it's fine. Those people, yeah. Well, yeah, well, it's also we cannot uh, obviously comment on that, but uh, this is how you feel. I think, um, my tower room got to me, Mudoguti, don't see the way I'm known in Wingy Chidaguti T1 a solution. I think you were an Amchang and did Vagat is you were got to miss it. I would see an English that do do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What does to do? I wasn't does anything else. That's how it is. All right. No, no, no. Don't mm-hmm. want to it. Not in the school name where Matipa, Mr. Tintin. I'm just going to give. Uh, I still have a few guys here, and Dichina Chando. And Chango, goodbye. Your last words, and then we will call it an evening, Mr. Chando. If you can still hear us, uh, Chitipa, you your closing remarks, please. Ah, uh, in India, Jungo Kuruzi and Jibuti, Tunfana, Batana, be you need to unveil Zimbabwe, two inders upon Pamuchi, Sanguta, Sachamisa, Jedi, would in the Ajati, Sodinikaedu, in Rimbir. Nofana, Batana TC, Tisingata, said singers of Pomina Chamisa, good Agatazza, because Chamisa had Angas Gunarig. No, and to do Batu. No, it's a saga. I think he has a mam common, and no, there's no doubt, could he? We saw the young men uh, traversing the country, you know, imagine with every five years you're going through this and you go through it again. Yes, it's not easy. It's not easy. But that one day is the campaign. It's the campaign. It's the campaign. It's the campaign. It's at fun was on Pomira with Yagatats. Is it thinking that I could Pomira taste with Yagatats? Taste. Yes. No, that's the right spirit. Yeah. Spirit, Mr. Nice. Chando, and though you know, D. Wakubata, Nakubata, and a Daitaka Bata, and a Sema Zimbabweans. Maybe situation here teaching yeah. us in a gay Sipotina School in Angua, a Matipa, Mr. Chando. Thank you very much for your closing remarks. Thank you. Mr. Concerned Thank Citizen, Tins Woka Muruguti. Eh, seku sema zwenye kupedzisi la mtu lao kutichi. All right, uh, I think I will. I just don't give up. Papa, eh, can, can yes. you hear me? I think I think I had my mic on mute. Okay, go ahead, please. Uh personally, with this issue, I feel like all the options we have are in a way compromised. Because uh, even if we try the Sadak route, the people who ultimately have the, the, the final choice, as uh, most people have been saying, which they are also uh, liberation uh, leaders. So in a way, as we can already see from South Africa, uh, Urama Posa is already congratulating the president and uh, he's confirmed to be coming to the inauguration so i think personally the route for such is already compromised so i don't think we can use that one so i think i think the, we had three options basically the, the the first one was that one for the 
uh, and then the other one was obviously for the people themselves or let me say us the people but uh, you know our fellow Zimbabweans I don't think we, would he, we have the fighting spirit in us which is what was needed all along because even if you go on Twitter Sometimes I don't blame uh, South Africans when they are now bashing us because they say, you know, you guys, it's clear to the world that obviously you are not being treated fair, yet you just complain and you don't do anything. Because compared to them, South Africans will fight over anything as much as uh, they, 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 they come out as barbaric. Personally, I applaud them because they, they know how to act. While it's mm-hmm. us as Zimbabweans, we keep complaining and complaining and complaining and we we'll just complain at our houses. Because I saw on Twitter, there were some who were saying, you know, guys, let's, let, let's protest, obviously. Let's, let's go outside and do what needs to be done. And, and, and you could tell with the comments, others were laughing, others were saying, no, no protesting. My children need to go to school and stuff like that. So that option also is... Is, is in a way also dead and the other the other one was to maybe wait uh Zano out and as you said maybe wait for them to implode but we see how long that's gonna take no one knows no one knows really mm-hmm. uh, the, the, the luck we have with with with, with Zano pf is that uh, most of the leaders are old so maybe we'll just let nature take its course <laughs> right <laughs> maybe we yeah, just iyo manje iyo ye nature yo takambo imirira vamugabe takambo ti nature tikati nature ah ah nature... yes for then because uh, nature uh, is, is 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 80 80 life expectancy in Zimbabwe is 62 so <laughs> At this point, we just hope for the best because our other options, as for the cause, as for the cause, because we, we can even, even this issue has been, is, is, has been an ongoing issue all around the, the, the world because right now in, in Belarus, they, they, they also have the same issue. Uh, they, 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 they've been having the same president since uh, 94. And the whole world knows. It's the same with North Korea. The whole world knows. But then ultimately, the people who will make a difference are the people inside the country, not not the UN, not the SADC, not the AU. It's the people inside the country. So the moment Zimbabweans finally decide to stand up for themselves is the moment things are going to change. Uh, mm-hmm. But as I said, that's not going to happen anytime soon. So I we can just suffer for another five years. Maybe in five years, people will, will, will have had enough and they'll decide to finally say, ah, enough is enough. But uh, as things are at the moment, uh, it looks like we are still okay. People mm-hmm. are not because, complaining. Because enough. there's another theory, my brother, you could see. Because you know, this is the first time we're having a president Arguseva their last term. Right. It's like, um, like Idin knows could this is his last term. And it's like he's he can't change the constitution anyway because he doesn't have the two thirds majority. Saga like, uh America and Gachin's Lemdak president, you know, he, he well they are Lemdak in the in the sense that well you've lost the Congress and you don't have the Senate. Wangosara or moon, right? Saka so, kana pada rumani and you could my options are to actually do anything are, are very are very limited. I know it will issue you could a successor wagi manji because this is the yeah, only time we, we we know could pan a successor who's hanging. I can meet it and, and as, as someone said, me personally I believe would he Mm-hmm. It is not really the 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 the, the, the head of of Sun. It's, it's it's more of, it's more of a puppet leader. The raw brains are people, who, the people who are busy making all those remarks because they are the ones that have the most to lose. It is just the face of Sun. So right. personally, I think we are actually 
insulting the wrong person as much as it deserves all the insults it's not the person you should be looking at because mm -hmm. at the end of the day as you said once his term runs out they will look for another person to put that mm -hmm. the face of sanu and the whole cycle continues all over again and if they put a younger person uh, then it's we are doomed yeah because it's because another all, 10 years all things being equal and it get tomboti the line of thought and then she zama go pursue up and they go team Chiwenga, if, if Chiwenga feels good, he, he is the next in line, right? Whatever decision uh, Chiwenga is, is going to feel good. No, I'm, I'm the one that we have to carry this through. You will wait, this is your last time, right? So maybe budget gave you friction, the guy who wants to come in next feels good the president should not dominate he should have that graceful handover even before the five years we are still president and then maybe those that's well that's a, a theory that could obviously realize itself if um so, so, so maybe that's what we should actually hope for because if it happens in that sense, then it would mean uh, an implosion within Zanu and there will be a civil war within the party itself. And then we just yeah. see this organization and then we just use that mm -hmm. loophole right there at that moment. Yes, and, but, and uh, take advantage now, but now because we now, we now have experience here 2017. Saga, obviously, Pai uh, and you know the G army and then we were just we accepted Kuti. we felt ED was going to be different right and yet he's turned out to be worse so we're just thinking Kuti, this time around uh, uh, this time it's not going to make a short Tanunga Tanunga Bora to Tizanar and it Savavu Midzi Panengo Ajir Wisane Papu is to end an Ijimuti Maybe that's uh, that's one way of looking at it. But in any case, it's been a pleasure hosting you guys or being your host tonight. It's uh, coming up to exactly 23 minutes after 10 p.m. Zimbabwean time. 23 minutes after 9 p.m. Kuno kurandan. Tino zindash kurune nguwe matipa kuti ti pinde mzimbadze nyune pa mafoni nyuma ni runners. And I think this is probably going to be one of the last... Um, uh, broadcast on this matter hopefully we are planning to bring you the inauguration tomorrow live we will be at the national sports stadium hopefully we will be able to bring you that live feed from harare tomorrow but uh, for now this is day seven or five years ladies and gentlemen it is what it is um, our options are limited as you have been listening uh, at now Asila ndlela ezinengi esingakijimangazwa nje nzira dzekuti kuti manye nadzo dzinenge dzisina kuwanda pane vamwe vanhu vari kuti hanza hamuri kuti pa you making us lose hope no the intention here is never to dampen your spirits we are just trying to be realistic here we still there we still hopeful kuti mwari has got a plan for us we never lose that hope god always has a way of showing up in ways that we can never understand. So all I can encourage you Zimbabwe is to continue having the faith, ensure that um, you are contributing towards unity because the problem that we have amongst us as Zimbabweans, including myself, is we are not united. Someone suggests, well, let's do this. No, 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 no. Then that, it kills the spirit, you know, like, even Manirana Taishiji, maybe we, we need to unite to it, um, a protest within the confines of the law, what the law permits, because protests are actually allowed by, um, I mean, the laws of Zimbabwe permit that. So if we could unite and have peaceful protest, but it's in with Jashika Zungota, ah, and then in any man, it's not going to be a protest much. No, but that's a good And it. But if we had a spirit here, let me see what I can do to help. You see, 
tobva tabetsera na tuenda tiri pamberi ndo saka mchono kuti kune nika dzakaita sana Gabon especially in the north african countries they manage to accomplish things because they unite around even usanga vumira nazo nozongo pesa rongo kuti hachirege ndichite se dichungo ito izvo zvo tona kuti tinobuda se but uh, yeah so zimbabwe uh, on this very not i just want to thank you gentlemen prosper moyo and tintin thank you very much for allowing us to have a chat with you tonight for the rest of you guys we're just going to have a word of prayer and then we will meet again tomorrow heavenly father we want to glorify your name once again this evening for another year opportunity to be in your presence we acknowledge how unworthy we are before you father we want to present your children the zimbabwean people before you we have told for so many years 43 years in the wilderness and we were hoping that this time around we will see the promised land but we understand dear lord that a wait is never enough while we're waiting father may you help us to continue holding on to you help us dear lord to encourage one another and never to lose hope we want to remember in a special way mr chamisa who has been a voice of reason for many zimbabweans dear lord you protected him throughout the election period and is the only hope that we have for a better tomorrow and we pray dear lord that he may never be discouraged in whatever he is planning as the next step father may you give him wisdom go before him and go with him but above all father may you strengthen him in his walk with you because we know what is more important is the world that you lord jesus is going to prepare for us more than this earth that we yearn so much i pray dear lord that you may be with each and every listener tonight those that have taken their time to listen to us father i pray that you may bless them perhaps there are some that are still yet to have an encounter with you we pray father that they may find you perhaps there's someone who's listening to us tonight who is in need of healing holy spirit we ask that you may also attend to their needs tonight may you touch the hearts that are discouraged encourage those that need encouragement tonight but above all father we ask that you may write our names in the book of life so that one day when you shall come to take us home i pray that each and every ear that is listening to us tonight including our loved ones and many others that are not here with us that all of us will be found in that great number these messes and many others we ask in no other name but the worthy name of Jesus Christ amen bye for now zimbabwe you have a wonderful night